I started as the head of communications, marketing and public affairs here at University of Oulu last summer. So I'm just saying that the, the science communication is not maybe my, my sort of major in this communications area, but I'm happy to, to share what I have um, been thinking about the topic and then, then happily taking any, any questions or you tell me I'm wrong or, or something. Just, just um, have, a, have a discussion as well. Uh, you've been talking today a little bit more specifically about uh, open research, open publishing. And then my, my theme today for this 15 minutes is, is a bit more wider scope, as, as Minna said, about the visibility of research overall. So here goes. Um, my job is to make the, the university to be visible and maybe build a reputation. Uh, you all, everyone knows about these profiling exercises going on in, in, in the fin Finland, in the sort of the political side of science, and the universities have to sort of tell the world what they are good at and, and what are their specialties. So coming from that point of view, um, I would say that still uh, what is essential about communication is that people are interesting, new discoveries are interesting, organizations, not so much projects as a sort of project it m might be something that is not very easy to, to grasp at once if you, if you think about the, you know, the general public and not your pure scientist, but the, the general, general, general public. It might be quite hard to understand the, the time spans and how long the research project can be. And so that would be my statement for you today, that people are interesting, new discoveries are interesting. And I don't know if we have a chance to share, but why did you become a scientist in the first place? Why did you select this career? What, what did you want it to accomplish? So I was thinking that probably you wanted to change the world somehow. You probably wanted to, to discover something new, develop expertise in your own area. Maybe you want others to know what you know about, about your topic. And I'm thinking of who should know about your research, that's quite, you know, it's sort of the start from, from communicating and, and letting others know that what you've been up to in your, in your work. And we have been sort of redefining the, the communications here in the University of Oulu, and we've been discussing quite a lot that what should we put in the front row, that what should we talk about? And it was quite obvious that we need to let our scientists shine in the spotlight. And I know that it might not be so easy, uh, thinking that, okay, there are many. It's, it's quite often teamwork. It might not be so easy to say that, okay, this is the person that who should who should be there in the limelight. Like a couple of weeks ago, we were filming a short video clip about some uh, new, about the sort of breakthrough in science. And then it was a bit hard that, okay, if you go and talk about it, no, no, but we have to be here together and this is the whole team. And, and sometimes you have to choose that who is the spokesperson for your, for your project. And I don't know how much this is on your comfort zone as a scientist, but I just, you know, hope that when you, when you think about your work and what is important, how you, how you can have effect and impact in, in, in you know, more broader scopes, then, then you have to sort of take the steps that, okay, I, I go and I talk about it and I, there are things and, and, and tactics and, and, and tools you, you, can, you can learn. How many of you are in Twitter? Uh, do you find it useful? Somebody shows the thumb up. Okay. Uh, can can someone share any experiences or what have been the benefits for you being there and, and, and networking with others? Uh, the best way, at least in my opinion, is when you're at conferences and you want to connect with people you don't really know personally, so it's kind of a icebreaker maybe. Hmm. Or advertise your 
own publication. That's the other way I use it. Anyone else, else willing to share? Why do you why do you use Twitter? What do you gain from from that? Okay, I use Twitter to to to, you know, get the news. It's qu it's actually quite quick nowadays to, okay, I'm 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 looking at the the sort of science politics and and the, the societal level, but it's the best source of information for me because it, everything is is gathered there, and I don't know if there are groups like in your special areas or and of course there are many other services uh, from for different disciplines of science that where, where the, the scientists gather together and share information but i'm just you know from my point of view i wish you you go you would go to the like open spheres as well and not only talk with your you know colleagues and in, the, in this very closed loop but then and think that that who who there are in the world that who could be interested of of your research and I think that this is a win-win situation. When you uh, gain sort of visibility to yourself, knowing that it might not be your, your you know, primary <laughs> focus in your work, but anyways, uh, sort of the thing that you have to do to be effective as a scientist. So when you go there and you start building your own sort of reputation and, and, and brand maybe as a scientist, that helps also your university. And, and that is sort of my message to at least to, to our scientists that I, I my, me and my team, we really want to help you there, you know, gaining the visibility because that in, in turn helps the university to do the same. And, you know, ultimately universities are about people and, and the work you do. And, and that, that, is, that, is, that is the thing that we want to communicate about also, also as an as a organization and as a community. Is there anything that I should, I should take away from, from this short session, that what, what, what could the university do to help you? Maybe there should be some kind of guide for, for researchers, for the communication, the science communication and the popularizations to, of their own, own research. Do you have that? Uh, we have parts of it, but, but, but our building and what, okay, this is now only for, for all the folks, but we will be starting this sort of scientist communication masterclass pilot. So we will start with, with some group of scientists to sort of to build our program. And, and my message now is that, you know, you are free to communicate and the university, you know, got your back when you start doing it. So we are here to help. But of course, there are some tooling and some guidelines and things that we, we need to work and also work together with you because, you know, we cannot know everything about the, what's the everyday life for a scientist and when you, sh when you need help. But I, had, I had just shared a good example that there was one, one researcher from our university who got the recognition for his publication. So I, uh, I gave my team a hint that, hey, <coughs> this guy got this recognition. We made a short news piece about it and today he's commenting at Ule about this thing. So it really can lead to something very quickly also, but just, you know, let us know about your good news and, and we will be working on the tooling and also the, the sort of courses for you. Okay. I guess this is what I wanted to, to say, basically to set you free to communicate about your research. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Are there any further questions to Maria? But you would like to? You promised to have one. Yeah, I promised to. The, the paid uh, yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The paid question is that <laughs> uh, if we think about the open access, and we've been discussing how uh, difficult it's sometimes to disseminate scientific information because we have to wait for years to get mm. some article published, etc. So, uh, is media, uh, social media, Twitter? Uh, media presence, a way to give a, a sort of a glimpses of, uh, of what you've been um, doing and of, of your research, even if you cannot send your article mm. to your <laughs> colleague. <laughs> if, if I were a scientist, <laughs> then I, I, I would have been working on something very hard many years. I would start building the momentum before my major publication <laughs> goes out. So, Sharing something, 
not the whole beef, obviously, because you don't want anybody to steal it. But you know, start thinking that what what could I give away now that doesn't risk anything, and then maybe building on that, sort of building a story about my research. And, and then there are very nice sort of blogs. People write about the work of a scientist. That how did I become a scientist? What, what is my because that also could be interesting when you share something personal about your work. Not you don't have to share about your personal life, but you know your own perspective to your work, and why do you see that is important? But I, I would really start you know thinking a little bit strategically here that taking this communication that how can I build the momentum and when my you know my bang my big news comes out and then somebody knows already that I've been researching on this area and, and then taking from there this is not a concrete answer but yeah, I, yeah. The, probably there thinking. isn't yeah yeah, yeah. yeah.